Okay, so thank you everyone. Now we will have a slightly change of plans. I'm going to call on stage Ulrich, CEO of GaiaX, because he has an announcement. This was not on... Yeah, it was not planned, but uh, taking the opportunity, uh, we would like to make a little announcement, because yesterday an agreement was reached, and uh, for this I would like to ask uh, David uh, Kreef to join me here on stage, uh, president of one of the Lighthouse projects. <laughs> Um, Eona X, we talked about Gaia X Lighthouse projects yesterday, and this is a lighthouse project which has uh, an important milestone ahead of itself, and uh, this milestone needs to be reached, and uh, the system needs to be operative somewhat uh, next year. And David, maybe you can give us a little background on this and uh, what is the content of this agreement, and maybe you can just introduce yourself. With pleasure. Thank you very much. So my name is uh, David Kreef. I am a president of the AonaX data space. Uh, as some of you may know, AonaX is a data space for uh, tourism, mobility, and transport. And um, we set a kind of a crazy target for ourselves. We uh, determined to be ready for the Olympic Games in order to provide services for the transport, for following the delegation, and uh, helping overall mobility and uh, tourism awareness during this period. And so in order to do that, we need to have, of course, uh, use cases. That is our job. We need to have, uh, we need to have a strong uh, drive, and that is, uh, that is a given. And we also need to have something that works. As I think it was Pierre who said, you cannot build uh, exchange data on rainbows. And so we need to have uh, something else. We need to have a, a strong technical platform that can be ready in a very short amount of time. And so in order to do that, uh, we have a, we, we just been through a very long and a very fruitful and a fantastic process in order to select a technical platform. We've seen lots of really great companies. There was basically no bad options. And we have decided in the end to, uh, to rely on the platform of Amadeus who will be our partners for, the, for this adventure. So we would like you to welcome Patrick Ebon with a technical lead for Amadeus. Yeah, well, just saying that I'm very pleased that uh, we've invested a lot into data spaces and getting that right. And yeah, it's uh, an honor to do that for, uh, for Ionex going forward. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe for, for a picture, um, Catherine, as, as a lot of machines of your company will bring the, the guests and the, uh, the athletes uh, to the games next year, uh, please join me on stage here for a picture to celebrate this moment. So come a bit closer to the center. Maybe you will shake hands between Amadeus and, yeah. Thank you very much. And with this, um, over to Alberto. Thank you. Okay, so with that announcement uh, being done, we're going to keep on moving with the agenda. Alberto Palomo, our chief data officer here in the government of Spain, is on stage because he will be the moderator for the next panel uh, regarding uh, data adoption in the market. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm staying on stage, but I'm taking a completely different role. Um, in fact, I, I want to show you, um, I don't know if I can have the people that will join me on stage come already. Uh, there's, there's four of them. Um, I, I want to show you what we are building from the Spanish uh, ecosystem, right? Um, because we need, we need to back up our words with, with action. So this is our, our, um, our moment to tell you what, what we've been working on and what, we, um, what, we've, what, what really what has been built. Um, um, before, I, before I start with the presentations, 
Um, I want to also um, thank um, publicly um, Andres Perello, who's been very kind in, in loaning us this, um, this fantastic venue. Uh, several people congratulated me yesterday for the choice of the venue. I don't have anything to do with it, um, but it's, I think I, I really truly think it's fantastic, and the weather has been quite cooperative. So a so big thank you to Casa de Mediterranea and to Andres for, for giving us this, uh, this opportunity. So yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try not to talk much because I'm not the, um, uh, the main uh, person here. It's really about the ecosystem and, and, and providing the, um, you know, with this view of, of really taking action and, and not just keeping the words, but also showing what we have done. This is the moment for the Spanish ecosystem to, to present some of the work that has been done. Um, uh, if I follow the order, I, you know, we invited Raquel Jorge, who works for the uh, Real Instituto Alcano. It's a governmental, it's a very, very prestigious governmental think tank. Um, and so she's the, she's the head policy analyst for technology and, and global affairs. Um, also, obviously, you know Daniel very well at this point, a uh, member of the board of the ASBL and, and, and part of ET. Uh, they're headquartered here in Valencia and, and also um, president of the Gaia X Hub Spain. Uh, Javier Garcia Fortea, he's a deputy director in logistics. And uh, we, it's interesting, he will tell you more about it later. We actually found that there was already a data space in Spain. Of course, they didn't call it that because that, the term wasn't invented when the project started uh, four, five, six years ago. Um, and now we're, we're in conversations to make sure that, you know, the work that they've done really shines, you know, because it's, it's, it's an actual data space running. Uh, and then finally, Chechu Santa Maria, also from the Spanish uh, hub but, and, and uh, CTO in, in Tecnalia, um, they were, they've been one of the strongest centers as far as uh, Horizon 2020 projects and one of the key role players in Spain for around the data economy uh, will tell us about the, the work that the, um, that the Spanish hub has done and, and, and as far as platform and the Gaia X Digital Clearing House. So without more delay, um, Raquel, um, why don't you tell us your geopolitical uh, views and, and connections to, 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 to Gaia X? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the kind invitation. It's a pleasure always to be in touch with, uh, with technical communities and also with these institutional views. As Alberto Palomo said, I work in a think tank, so... Thank you. So, uh, so my main role is basically to assess how Spain is positioned internationally in tech and digital policy and also how international policy has an effect and an impact on Spain's role and Spain's assets. Okay, so first of all, ah uh, yes, thank you. First of all, uh, what we see is that Spain, so first of all, we cannot understand GAIA-X and we cannot understand data infrastructure models without, without understanding the whole overall situation at the geopolitical and global level. Why? Because Maybe we could structure this uh, presentation into three main blocks, okay? The first one will be how Spain is positioned in terms of capacities and maturity. What we have seen in recent years is that Spain has improved its ranking. It ranked before around the 12th, 11th position, and now it ranks 7th. Now we will not have these sort of rankings by country. We will have the state for the digital decade, which will provide policy recommendations for each country. And that is why I think that the, the opportunity of having different voices here from member states is a, is, a truly, is a true opportunity to assess how this overall situation on digital infrastructure, digital literacy, digital government, and also digital businesses may have, to, may have an effect on how Gaia, Gaia X ecosystems can foster their own voice. The second part, the second part is uh, uh, how um, Spain is influencing in the EU's digital single market building up process. Because usually what I have identified is that some people uh, both admire and criticize these initiatives. Because for some people, these, initi these initiatives correct the market, and for other people, these initiatives make the market. I think that what Spain has, has been fostering in recent years is that it makes the market. I mean, indeed, it regulates the market, but that is why it is making it. So here we have to take into account regulation, economic competitiveness, and industrial policy. 
But what I would like to stress out is uh, the role of Spain at the geopolitical level and how Spain can help the EU and, 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 not, and also partner with EU member states to plug into some international initiatives that are taking place right now and also in recent years. I don't know if you remember a few years ago when Japan proposed the T20 Osaka track to foster a trusted, interoperable, interoperable safe data spaces, uh, both for personal and industrial uh, spaces. This was rejected at the very end by some non-EU countries, by some specific countries that were outside the EU. But in the case of the European Union and some countries, they are, they are incredibly supporting how Spain and other EU member states should foster this cross-border data transfer, uh, always based on, re on the regulation that happens inside the EU. So, so our, our, main, our main experience is that Spain can serve as two things. First, as a connectivity bridge, not only in terms of the very data spaces, the very software, but also the hardware that, that allows that, that data flow through. Because Spain is positioned, geographically speaking, between North America, South America, and also the African continent. That will be the first point. And the second point is how the, the, the very territorial features of Spain can be a guidance for, and, and also as, as a, can be a, a, an example for other countries because they, they are, I mean, the, the institutions and also the private sector are fostering a distributed data powered and data based ecosystems. And, and, you know, in some cases, there are countries that have a much more centralized uh, governmental approach. In the case of Spain, we have uh, 17 different regional administrations plus the national administration. And that means that when working in terms of uh, data ecosystems, Systems, the most important approach across other, along with other areas, is is to guarantee that there is territorial coherence, then social cohesion and economic growth. So the the, the mindset here will be which is the role of the of EU member states in the case of Spain, but also in the case of of other EU countries. We have seen in in, in recent months that the European Commission has proposed the first economic security strategy. Its main output has been the proposal for a list on critical technologies, where data spaces and where data infrastructure is considered as one of the top priority critical technologies for the European Union. And this is something that at the member states level should be taken into consideration because it will be up to the private sector and up to the government to provide policy guidance and the way each member state has its own risk assessment on how the private sector and the public sector uh, conceive what we mean by critical technologies. And here, data is included as a top priority sector. That is why, in the case of Spain, but also in the case of other EU member states, it will be highly recommendable to provide this, uh, this, uh, this assessment to the European Commission. And I feel that the Gaia-X ecosystem plays a major role in this. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. Um, so this is kind of... No, no. So, so, so this is a context that I came in when, when I came into the office and tried to start designing strategies, right? These are all, uh, obviously, data and, and data flows and are, are very, an international, really, question. And I struggled at first when, when a lot of the topics that I was dealing with were not very technical. They were very political or commerce, you know? So... Um, Thank you. Thank you for that, Raquel. That's, that's pretty useful. Um, I'm going to jump this slide because this is, I've already told you what we try to do, right? Uh, it's about how to foster and surface the value in data and how to foster interconnection between different data systems, you know? Um, that's what data spaces are all about. Um, but how do you actually do that? Well, this is a vision that we built a while ago in Spain, right? Um, to go from the local level to solving actual problems to the European level, right? And it, I mean, it looks complex, but it's actually fairly simple. You know, um, we have, there's different industries and those are, it's the voice of the industry that really has to carry and decide on the challenges. And that's where you build those use cases around data and cloud and AI, you know, and, and you learn and you experience and you innovate. And then that scales up to the national level, right? Which in this case is represented by the Gaia-X Hub Spain which consolidates and boosts you know, those, the learnings of those projects and the, and, the, and the fabric of the ecosystems and the communities, right? That really then 
then um, you know they need to converge and connect uh, with the work that is being pushed by uh, by the European um, uh, community really with you know the DSSC and 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 the um, uh, and the European Commission, the Digital Europe Program, and and the Horizon from from RTD, you know, and and that's where all the architectural and methodologies really come useful in 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 making it simpler, making it simpler for whom, for the use cases, because that's where the actual impact is created, right? So, you know, what did we're about to publish this very very soon. Um, we call it the data spaces implementation plan. Um, it's, it's carried different names, right? Because when we came into office uh, two and a half years ago, yes, there was a data space concept, but everybody had a different definition of what data space was. And there's a, a lot of money put in the Spanish uh, recovery and resilience funds, up to 500 million for data spaces. And the definition of data space was loose at the very best, you know? And a lot of people were like, well, that's, that's a data lake. Well, no, no, not really. Uh, that's a node at best. So we decided to define, you know, what's the value in data spaces, you know, what are the characteristics and dimensions of data spaces. And I'm seeing Boris, you know, a lot of this is feeding from the data space support center, as you would expect, and from all the work that has been done in Europe. But the, to the, what's the bottom part of part one, it's where it really gets a little more tricky, you know. You talk about integrated governance of interoperable data spaces. This is a state of the art. And, you know, you talk about organiz organizing and controlling data spaces, and this gets a little political and what these international relations are all about. You know, we, we don't want to prescribe models, but we want to surface what's available out there. And, of course, this leans very natural to data space architectures, you know, and where data lakes or uh, data meshes or data warehouses are useful and where they're not useful. Um, you know, part two talks about you know, more the political part, you know, the strategic objectives that us as government are trying to f uh, solve, really, or help from the data spaces. Uh, and then part three is about how to take it into practice. You know, what are some deployment conditions? What are uh, evolutions of uh, con con ideas for to consider when you evolve data spaces and data quality and privacy and licensing and interconnecting data spaces and this is a work in progress this we don't expect that this document will be the final you know um, the, uh, the European community needs to feed heavily from this um, this document tries to be nothing else but the uh, seed or a, or a help or an aid, a guide for really coordinating the ecosystem, you know? And what does that mean? Well, we expect that the Spanish ecosystem, and this is the content of the talk today, is going to show us how they're mapping the industrial needs, you know? Um, and how that knowledge creation leads to access to technology and services, you know, it facilitating people to adopt technology. And, uh, and that will also lead to accelerating the concept of data intermediary, which is very, very uh, heavy on the data governance act, you know, and that's related to business models around data. And it's, frankly, it's a problem that you need to still solve in many, many practical ways. And because that's going to lead to the sovereign inclusive, you know, and uh, data economy. And obviously, that's where, as government, we, we really care about. You know, we need to make sure that sovereignty and inclusivity business inclusivity too is, is taken into account and that's where the data projects really have to come and, and feed from that interoperability governance because this is all about interconnecting projects and data spaces and this is the this is part of the mission of, of Gaia X. So that's what I wanted to tell you. And with that, um Danielle, which you know very well, um is gonna talk about one of those uh pillars in the uh in that compass, you know? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, I will follow uh, by highlighting the importance of uh, experiment to, to accelerate the adoption of the data economy in, in Europe and how we are doing in, in Spain with uh, uh, real and current uh, services that are, are already running. I like this. Um, this idea that was, uh, I think, uh, firstly uh, created by BDBA in a paper some years ago. Now, Data Spaces Support Center has uh, has uh, improved a, a lot, but I think for for uh, and, and almost everything has been has been mentioned before. But uh, I think we need for for uh, creating a real data economy in Europe. We need to combine at least at the beginning these four, four uh, main areas. We need the standards and regulations, and we have been uh, listening a lot about regulations, and Gaia-X is 
de facto estándar, we want to be de facto estándar, so we are doing a very good uh, work there. We need to, to converge if we want to be the leaders, the worldwide leaders in responsible use of data, responsible uh, AI. Uh, we need to create this convergence and the data spaces uh, 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 business alliance where GaiaX is already uh, playing a, a good role is uh, creating, uh, is, is doing a, a good work. We need to create awareness. We need to uh, tell about the impact, the benefits of the data economy, the data spaces to, to companies. But an important thing for me is to, uh, that complements all, all the others, is to, to offer companies and researchers and also uh, public administration the opportunity to experiment with existing technologies, business models, regulations, uh, standards in a safe and uh, trusted environment, controlled environment, uh, that can generate different scenarios, different flavors to uh, experiment with, this, with te these technologies. And also create uh, new technologies, not also test uh, existing technologies, but also offer the opportunity to experiment to create new technologies. Yeah, I, I think clearly um, we don't know yet uh, what the data economy will provide, how to best implement it, and experimentation plays a major role there. And this is one of the areas where we have been working uh, in, the, in the last years, since many years in, in Spain. We have, um, I think, a very strong ecosystem of mature organizations that have been providing these services for experimentation and innovation with digital technologies since long time ago. And now, more recently, with data and AI uh, technologies, providing infrastructures, knowledge, tools, and, and data and creating what is the uh, key for, for all these, uh, these um, data spaces, data economy, which is trust. We have created trust in our, our ecosystems around these experimentation facilities. And we, have, we can see here some figures about uh, what we have in, in Spain. We have, for example, seven I spaces that has been labeled by BDBA, which this is a quality level. Uh, we have eight uh, fiber I hubs. Uh, for sure, we have in the Gaia X hub, also the IDSA hub, and we are participating also in two out of the four testing and experimentation facilities and 51 digital innovation hubs. So uh, this is a very strong ecosystem that uh, that is already providing services. And how does it work? I will focus on ITI, which I know better uh, and you can imagine. And we have providing, we are providing, or uh, we have started with uh, from our knowledge uh, for the onboarding of companies in the digital uh, digitalization of the digital economy and also how to extract value from from data we start from this knowledge we also provide uh, tools models uh, to deploy different stacks uh, to 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 extract value from from data technology stacks and we are providing our own infrastructures to uh, serve this uh, experiment. So we, when we received some requirements from a company, from a researcher uh, to make an experiment, we can deploy it in an easy way, in, an, in a very fast way, the, the personalized stack of technologies and, and, and tools in order to test any of the elements in the, in the data and value chain, data quality, data governance, everything has been mentioned as important in these two days. Data ingestion, data storage, sharing, access control, security, identity, and also we can create a data space lab in our uh, experimentation facility. So we can test everything before going to, to, to the market, providing these three Mm, sets of uh, services, infrastructures or resources, uh, personalized services, personalized resources, sorry, access to knowledge, data management, also ethics, legal, very important as it was mentioned before, and also skills. And just to finalize, we are not doing this alone. We are, uh, and we have created a network of uh, experimentation facilities uh, with a federate, federated catalog, federated way, way of working, sharing best practices, and this is the way of providing uh, services to our local ecosystem, but also uh, grant the access to other uh, services in other 
geographies, in other countries, in other uh, experimentation facilities, and connect to all these. It's people. all about interconnection, Inter for sure. Yeah. yeah. And Th this is more or less, I, I think this is providing uh, value at this uh, current value at this moment, but I think this is uh, still very useful for the next challenges we have ahead with very big projects that are coming uh, in the in the following And, and you highlight there a very interesting point, which is the data economy needs to take into account small and, and medium enterprises because they really have a huge footprint in our economical um, uh, framework. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Daniel. Um, this is the big moment of the session because I was excited to learn of this ADIF uh, logistics. We, we're a bit tight on time, so bear that in mind because I, I really want to be able to show all the different things. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting Arif, the Ministry of Public Works and Transport and Puerto del Estado to this event. So, ah, okay. So I'm going to start the presentation. Uh, what is Simple? Simple is a digital platform promoted by the Ministry of Public Transport, the, the Public Works and Transport, and two state-owned companies called ADIF, the Railway Infrastructure Manager, and, the, and Puerto del Estado, the Port System Manager. Why would why we decided to to implement this digital platform? We started in 2015, almost 10 years ago. And the big effort for the last four years was developed due to we need to find a digital solution for uh, the exchange data for all transport flow in Spain. But when we, th when we think about logistics, we can think just uh, only about transport flow here, here in Spain, but also all this transportation flow related to in, in, uh, from Europe or to Europe, from to Spain. So, uh, due to that, although we have a solution for the system to system interoperability via API in Simple, we know that um, all the digital ecosystem changes very rapidly, and uh, we wanted to to be in order with the European Union legislation. So, we decided to participate in a uh, EU self federated project under the umbrella of the DGLF. This is um, an expert group in, from the European Union in order to help to develop the foundation of a digital, uh, digital infrastructure provision for data sharing in a secure, neutral, and transparent uh, manner, and providing interoperability and harmonization during, uh, into uh, European platforms. What does it mean? We've been, uh, we've been four years working with other beneficiaries from Europe in order to define the semantic model or define the reference architecture model that it could be useful for the logistics and transport sector in Europe in order to facilitate this interoperability. And I would like to take the opportunity to inv uh, invite all of you to our final event in the end of November uh, in Brussels, where we're going to, to, to expose all the living labs and the conclusion of this uh, federated project. But, what? Okay. What is Simple? Simple is a, feder a, a federative technological platform for the integrated and digital management of data link related to transport of goods between nodes and modes. What, that, what, that is, what does it mean? It's not just a solution for a monomodal transport. It's going to be a solution for multimodal transport aligned to the Green Deal and the uh, sustainable and smart uh, mobility strategy in the European Union and Spain. We need to find a, a, a digital solution in which you know, using a common language it could be possible to, to exchange and reuse data between the different actors in the logistic uh, change. What are the main objectives? The principle, to provide services, provide B2B, B2A and A2B services 
in the, uh, for all actors in the logistic chain. Why? Because we need to, to increase a, a, a better time and cost efficiency and a, better, uh, a more sustainable solution for the whole sector. As I said before, in, in accordance with the uh, European legislation. How? By digital means. Which other objective we would like to, to get? To provide visibility in the whole supply chain in order to, uh, to plan better all the operations. And also the traceability of goods, transport means, and equipment during the whole logistic change. But it's not only a solution for operational things. We need to find how to be interoperable with the whole sector. And here we, we, we wanted to find a solution not only for all this a, a company who has a, a system to system, system solutions, that we, we have a solution um, via APA, but also simply must be a solution for all these companies in Spain who has not uh, IT systems. I have to remember that in Spain, the high, material, the high digital maturity level in the sector, uh, logistics sector is less than 25%. So we have 25% of companies who, who need some solution to provide data. So we decided to find a solution uh, uh, via web interface in which this company can register their data. And at the same time, it's a way to facilitate the digitalization and to be competitive in the digital world. But how simple runs? If we talk about the identity and access management, simple decide to use the cloud systems for the user, entity, and access management in simple. Uh, why, why we decide to, to use uh, cloud? Because uh, every entity and user can use their own certificates and also the user management, uh, is a, there is a relation between uh, AIDAS and, and Clave. And in the case of, sorry, in the case of entity management, uh, all these companies, uh, as I said before, they can use or they can self-register in, in Simple using their uh, Clave proxy certificate. And the permission uh, management is related to their logistic their logistic role in, in the their entity role in the logistic change. What are the, the main services and main functionalities? We can divide in three big blocks. The first one is related to the B2B services, and is the uh, uh, all is managed uh, uh, around the concept of delivery and the set of events related to the transport and deposit, uh, depos uh, deposit events related to the transport change. And uh, the second block is related to the B2A services, where we have to find solution not just for all these uh, uh, leg um, legislation obligations, but also like FTI or inspection in road transport and so on, but also for all these B2A transactions uh, in the transport, in the transport uh, sector who need uh, the collaboration between the public administration and, and the uh, private company. For example, how to know where the train is located or, or, the, calls, or the ship calls. And the third of one is to develop a marketplace. Uh, although Simple is more focused in B2A, in B2A services and all the re reusable data for management of B2B services, we, we think that we need to provide a marketplace in, in simply where we can uh, put in value the, the data model in simply in order to other companies uh, can develop uh, new services. An example that I would like to explain a little more uh, quite is the concept of, of FG. I don't know. We've been talking about in this event about uh, European regulation and so on. So this is uh, a very important regulation in the in the transport sector. FT means electronic freight transport information. Um, 
This FC regulation uh, is expected to be applicable in the first half of 2026, and it will be mandatory for the public administration to accept electronic uh, information if any economic operator decides to, uh, to send it in this way. What does it mean that this economic operator should send this information uh, through FT platforms? How this information go to the authorities? Due to the connection of these FT platforms to FT gates, that it will be one for uh, each member state in the European Union, and route to the uh, authority who has to, to analyze or to inspect and so on. Simply will be an FT gate and will be a FT platform. And, and this, is a, this is a little bit tricky because we've just finished a pilot where we, uh, a pilot successfully where we test the main functionality of the FT gate, but we know that due to the, the implementing and delegating act, it's not finished, it's not over, that we know we have to continue working on that. Eh? But uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's important to, 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 uh, to say that simply will be FT gate. The design of the world of simply, I'm going to be in a hurry because it's, we need many hours to explain that. Three main pillars, the semantic model, we need to use a common language. This is, the, well, this is talking about semantics. And we decided to, to use the semantic model uh, developed in our federated project. Simple architecture. We have to uh, distinguish the simple architecture that we have two, two different solutions, the off-chain solution based on microservice, Java microservice with uh, Angular user interface that is connected to the on-chain solution. There is a private uh, network of hyperledger fabric uh, blockchain, where we have the traceability of data in simple. And the last of one is the governance. The governance with the, the different layers. It's not it's, it's a government based on values, the same values that the European Union use in the data in their digital strategy. But we have to, 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 to move these values to the different layers that compose the governance. The, the, uh, the community governance, the civic governance, the data governance, and the last one, the technical governance. Uh, Javier, I, I think that's actually extremely uh, relevant. Um, and you can see, very, I hope you can see clearly how he, you know, they come from the DG move, they come from the um, um, transport and, and, and infrastructure side, but they really are sort of using the same concepts and ideas that they've discussed within the uh, European data ecosystem. If you allow me, in the interest of time, and since you have a demo, um, would you be able to go? Because these are obviously, he's, he's going to get into the technical details, but I'd rather him show you the actual demo of the platform running. You know, okay. this is. Okay. I don't know how I can run the demo. I think they might have to start it from, yeah. from that side. We have a bunch of demos, so. It's okay? Technic okay, this is the demo of how simple run. Simple is real. Can you um, start up for us, please? We've been testing during two years all the implementation of Simpler. We, we run a total of 12 pilots, uh, not just in Spain, but also in the European Union with other colleges in the, our federated project. And we hope, we expect to be operative in, in th this month. And how you, you can see here, you, if, if a user has different uh, uh, the, a shipment, we can see, he can see the, the shipment, the, the info related to the shipment, the actors, what type of materials is going to be transported, and the traceability of, the, of, of this uh, shipment with the main events. Shipments are related to transport, uh, transport order, and this order can be finalized in execution or, or, or just ordered. If you want to see 
any of this information, you can click in this uh, shipment and see the traceability of event related to, to each uh, transport leg related to the multimodal transport change. You can see here the different screen, and if the consignor of the consignor wants to know where the transport, uh, where the, uh, the goods are, it's just click in the proper uh, shipment, uh, click in the proper transportation order, and see how it, uh, where she is located. Okay. That's um, it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Obviously, there's a lot to it, and, um, but I, I, I hope it, it kind of gives the idea, you know, of something that was started years ago. Obviously, it's not Gaia-X branded because Gaia-X didn't even exist at the time. And that's part of what I've been uh, hoping and I've been working with the uh, Gaia-X hub and the Spanish ecosystem to kind of provide those capabilities uh, for projects and people like Javier who have a business thing to solve. And it's a federated ecosystem or a federated network. And, and obviously, there's a, a capability to reuse a lot of the work that is being done by this more detailed side of, of the house. And with that, um, Chechu is going to tell us a little bit about those technical capabilities within the Spanish Gaia-X hub because, you know, we've, they've implemented an instance of uh, Gaia-X clearing house. So we wanted to show you some of those things up and running. Okay, thanks, uh, Alberto. So a, a few words to tell you about uh, some of the technical activities that we are performing in the, Gaia, uh, in the Spanish uh, hub related to the Gaia-X adoption in the Spanish ecosystems. So, uh, first of all, one of the, the missions, objectives in, in this Spanish hub is to, uh, yeah, is, is, is to uh, help uh, existing uh, project, existing initiative to be harmonized, to harmonize the solution and the interoperability mechanism that they use. Uh, and I would like to start uh, uh, Linking with, uh, sorry, linking with the last presentation of Javier about uh, Simple, uh, the platform Simple, and elaborate a little bit about uh, uh, the possibilities that uh, Simple has in the future evolution to integrate with the Gaia X ecosystem. So, uh, take into account that uh, the Simple, uh, simple, uh, simple uh, project comes from a, a, a theft transport uh, project that uh, at the end uh, the, this, the, the, the federated project where the architecture has a similar technology stack, a similar concept to initiatives like IDS or, or Gaia-X. And, and take it, this into account, uh, we, we can, uh, I think that uh, Simple can uh, take benefit from Gaia-X in the, his future evolution in two directions. In, uh, in the inner part of, of the, the upper circle, uh, internally, simp uh, simply could also uh, uh, ha could evolve the identification, authentication, uh, authorization mechanisms to use uh, the trust framework and the mechanisms of GaiaX uh, uh, using uh, verifiable credential and uh, cell descriptors. But a more feasible integration could be the second possibility that is outside this uh, this circle, that is to to be a participant in the GAIAX ecosystem and to be a registered participant where uh, the, the, and act as a data service and, a, uh, and a, sorry, a data provider, a service provider where the, the, the data and the service has been previously uh, registered in the catalog and has been exposed to the different uh, GAIAX ecosystem. And then uh, the external participant could access to the da data and to the service provided by, by Simple. This is one example of, of uh, this future uh, convergence of Simple uh, in GAIA-X. So second uh, activity related uh, with the Spanish hub, as we have been mentioned in several previous presentation, we are, uh, we are participating in, this, uh, in the deployment of, of the clean houses uh, in this pylon phase of, of GAIA-X. And we have deployed an instance of uh, the GAIA-X digital clean house that is operated by one of our of members, uh, Aire Networks. Uh, we have already deployed and is working this, this instance and currently is under official evaluation for accreditation by, by GAIA-X. Uh, the, the note has been deployed with uh, extended verification certificates and with uh, the, the, service, uh, the service version of the mandatory uh, services that are mentioned in, in the slide. 
and uh, that is uh, has uh, this uh, instance provide common technical capabilities for data providers for service providers to uh, uh, register in the in the in the in the node to uh, uh, to create the verifiable credential and to uh, start testing business use cases uh, with uh, with this uh, this node we have already started to to make this this test and with application like uh, joining uh, data coming from heterogeneous uh, sources or apply uh, service related with with uh, artificial intelligence uh, this uh, instance has been tested in several proof of concept with many partners and of the Gaia X uh, hub and this is one of the value of this instance that is not uh, participated by one only company but uh, uh, several companies that are started the test have started to adopt the, the, the technology and uh, I have here some short videos showing how the for instance how the the wizard has been used to generate the the, the verifiable credentials and how are accessing the, the compliance services to to check that this verifiable credentials I uh, are uh, are signed uh, adequately uh, we have also some uh, uh, video uh, showing how the uh, the test between ID networks and Arsis are accessing the, the service provided by the instance of uh, Spanish hub of the digital clean house, signing the verifiable credential also. And we have also some other uh, tests that we, in a more, let me say, complex uh, uh, test where an orchestrator service is uh, is calling to, to the to the um, uh, to the uh, verifiable credential of the different participants providing uh, data and checking that uh, the the credential are okay we have manipulated the, the credential to see that uh, in some uh, case the, the the system is able to detect that there is no matching with uh, with uh, the 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 right uh, credential registered and in, in the node so, so essentially it's not following the gaia x rules yeah, and, and that's why it's not approving it. And this is now a, it's approving it. Another example that is where all the credentials are ready, and we go to the next step of processing the data, uh, going to the analytics, make the join, and process uh, uh, this uh, this data further with uh, with uh, artificial intelligence. There are several. As I mentioned there are several uh, participants of the Spanish hub that are taking part in this in this uh, test, like CETIC, Tecnalia, Telefonica, Segitur, and. Uh, uh, um, uh, Tourism Andalusia and Beyond Trend. And uh, just uh, to finish, uh, remember some of the uh, activities that we do in, in, the, in the Spanish hub that uh, in, only in the, in the working group related with technology we are more than uh, 50 members already. And the activities are related to provide guidelines uh, to, to people to know how they could uh, build data spaces and which are the building blocks that they want to select to provide technical support to harmonize this current initiative related with data spaces, to develop uh, experimentation facilities to check the technology, to continue working with this uh, instance of the digital cleaning house uh, with the deployment that they use in further projects, and of course to support the creation of new projects that build uh, demonstrators, uh, uh, high big projects uh, related with, uh, with uh, GAIAX and also related with the guidelines of the European uh, Association, uh, yeah. um, data space uh, business, uh, data space uh, support center. Thank you, thank you, Chechu. Um, I have a final question for you guys since we have one minute left, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I want to be a little bit practical um, about everything that we've been sharing. So uh, I said, well, what do you think the Spanish ecosystem has to do to develop practical and sustainable data projects that use the GAIA-X framework. And Chechu, since you're here, I'll, I'll start with you. So uh, uh, I, I think that uh, you have, we have talked about uh, uh, two aspects that are uh, pr um, uh, sustainable and practical. I think that concerning sustainable uh, projects, uh, I think that uh, uh, of course, we need to uh, imagine or to, to, to work with an uh, innovative way of combining data uh, to solve real problems. But uh, uh, with, uh, what we need is that uh, there should be a business model behind. So I did that the technology will be ready, but we need 
to have business cases, business model already defined, uh, clearly defined uh, behind this data sharing. And related with this, uh, I think that in all the working groups of uh, Gaia Case Spain, we are working in, in defining these business cases. And especially in the in the working group related with Turing, we have uh, we have defined a, a lot of uh, business cases. We have started to select one related with combination of accommodation data coming from uh, different uh, sources, coming from st statistical uh, historical data, coming from uh, 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 from the uh, from the Ministry of Turing and combining with dynamic real data coming from the systems of the hotels that uh, could lead to processing this data to make uh, going from the data to the action to uh, provide recommendations. Yeah, from data to this. value. Yeah. Continue. This is an example of, of, of this uh, first proof of concept that we are, we are uh, performing related with this business case. And the idea is also to, starting from his, to define a life project in tourism that could uh, go to this practical ap uh, application of Gaia X in, uh, in, uh, in, business, uh, in business cases. I don't know, Danny. Did you want to close the remarks? Well, uh, I think the the data economy will be sustainable if we are uh, if we can include uh, a high percentage of the of the companies in this uh, data economy. So, I th I think we need to continue uh, working on this uh, concept data sharing data spaces, uh, but do not forget the digitalization phase, because uh, most of the companies or a high percentage of the companies need. Uh, a lot of support, coach, to understand what data they have and how they can extract value, even in an isolated way, and then uh, going to, to, to share this data. So keep working on data spaces, but, uh, but do not forget the, the basic di digitalization of companies in order to have a real data economy. Thank you. Raquel, more from the political and international realm. Y yes, my, my slight recommendation will be Let's keep fostering these data ecosystems within Spain and across the European countries, but do not forget the agendas in Latin America and Caribbean countries. Do not forget how to, how to leverage these economic growth opportunities into third countries, because that is as well a way for European uh, ecosystems to foster their own voice, not only in the digital market internally, but also abroad. Thank you. Javier, the user perspective on what do you need from the Spanish the data ecosystem? Okay, uh, I'm commercial. Um, I came from the operational side. So I know that the, the lack of interoperability is a big problem in, in our sector. So we need to find uh, uh, a common digital solution for the Spanish eco ecosystems. For the benefit of, of, of all, of course. I don't know if the best one is Gaia Framework or other ones, but I'm sure that we need to collaborate, all of us, in order to find this this common solution and, and of course, align with the European Union legislation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all of you guys for, for coming here and, and sharing your thoughts, and, and thank you for the audience too.